Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tutorial lesson number four on Martin, Martinus Sieveking and his piano technique. Wikipedia says Martinus Sieveking, born March 24th, 1867, died November 26th, 1950, was a Dutch virtuoso pianist, composer, teacher, and inventor born in Amsterdam, also known as Martin Sieveking. He performed as a solo, soloist around Europe and the United States during his active career and taught in France and in the U.S. after he retired from performing. He is sometimes referred to as the Flying Dutchman due to his Dutch heritage and extremely flighty nature. At the peak of his career, he was pronounced by the New York and Boston critics as one of the four greatest living pianists of that time, along with Paderewski, Rosenthal, and Josephi. Sieveking was an advocate of the dead weight principle of playing. He devised his own variation of this system and wrote several articles about the subject for publication. He was also an inventor of both musical and non-musical devices that he had patented in various countries. And this is a picture of him in 1897, he'd be 30 years old, at the peak of his career. And my teacher, Gladys Barnes, studied with him at Juilliard in New York in 1916. August of 1916, she wrote this manual of, of, the, of the exercises that he invented and wrote and put, put on paper. So I'm going to just review some of the, the ones we already covered very quickly, just so that we know where we're at here. But I want you to understand the importance of technique, this Siva King technique, not being just for the sake of strengthening your hands, but to enable you to produce the kind of tone you want to produce when you're playing a piece of music so that your hands are strong enough to handle that. Pardon the pun. <laughs> so if I take a piece like this and I go... See, I want, to, I want to know that that hand is strong enough that I can rotate and, and transfer the weight, crawl the weight from here to here and go up to that note and then and by anchoring that weight in that key and hear it die down and then then come down. is being in the keys and having a strong arch that you can rotate along and across when you crawl your weight to the next note. So in order to, to get inside a piece of, of romantic music, there's all kinds of things you need to think about. For example, the, the physics of what gravity does to all these body cells that are vibrating uh, to, uh, so freely, like 70 trillion body cells or whatever it is that's in the human body, it has to be affected by gravity. And when you can think of, of the arm, just a heavy weight that you can th release on the way up, then that weight is going to be able to produce the tone when you flop and drop and balance and take the weight into the key and draw the tone out of the piano. So you need to be able to release on the way up into this volume of air that's, that's allowing you to decelerate because gravity's, you've released it, gravity's taking it slower and slower and slower to, to stop and you're meditating and then because you're free to go around while you do it, you listen for what kind of sound you want to come in and then when you drop, you draw and take into your stomach the kind of sound that you want. So. It allows you to be waiting on certain notes and then and think of the magic, think of what you're trying to create. I can't see a, the keyboard with the key with the iPad in my way.
So the smoothness of the line and then the voicing of it. Now I just want to go over these exercises that we already covered quickly. So in lesson one it was the one finger exercise which is two on D. And notice the tone is heavy and big and solid but it's not harsh because I'm not pushing and getting a, a straight line. I'm trying to create a wave from that hammer to lop up into the wire. And so I have to have that, that diving board give in it and balance. So then, then I do the left hand, which is two octaves lower, which is down here. I'm keeping the wrist to the right and the left, and so on. And then I do it staccato, the same thing. So it's the arm's just hanging there like you're hanging on the edge of a cliff. So heavy. And then I do it on the black keys, the same thing. And the left hand, the same on the, on, on the black keys. So I can take, uh, I can do it, do it on E flat. It's different when you're on the black keys. You feel a difference in the balance than it is on a white key. And it fine tunes the muscles in the fingers to handle, to handle, let you balance there. And then lesson number three was the quick action four sixteenths, uh, four times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the left is the same thing, two octaves lower. And so on. Then I, we did an independent finger repetition, like and the same in the left. So then that's lesson three that we did, and now lesson four was taking a group of C, D, E, D, like this. Two, three. So each end of the hand has to be just as strong. And in the left, it's the same thing. Then we did it on the black keys. Um, so that would be. And there's a quick, sharp action. It's not just thinking of uh, uh, trying to struggle the fingers. The hand is still, so the finger action and the lift are all in the hand. And eventually, the strength of the finger takes that weight. And you can crawl that weight and be in the keys. And then we did exercise number eight, which is and we did the same in the left, so it was Now lesson nine is a very important one because it's preparing for a harder one. The harder one is a trill like that and this is preparing for it and you do it on each group. So here we go. It's C, D, C, D, E, D. So there's six notes in each group. It's just that the last group is C, D, C, D, E, C, so that you can get up to the D, E, F group with a two, three, one. So it's. And so it's three, one. Now two, three, one. Two. Once you get there, pick up the speed a little if you feel comfortable with it. When you get here, go as fast as you can. So it's and then you have to be able to come down. So it's it's and it's the same on each group: the two, three, four, the three, four, five, and down here the C, D, E group, three, four, five. I'd start with a three, two, one group till you get strong with it. Now, two, three, one. So these go 
it goes up and then it comes down. So when it descends, it's A C on the sixth five six. Now two one three. So each group goes up and down like that. So that's plenty for you to work on for now, and it'll prepare you for the trill where you have to hold the bottom note, which will be later. So uh, I hope you're able to take those exercises to heart and really work them each day, and you'll feel independent finger strength coming as you work them. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.